Buenos días. Good morning. So, I have to open the second day of this international conference, Tenerife More Sustainable. As the organizers, I, we're very proud and very and delighted for the amount of people we see to coming in, listening to the lectures that have been were given yesterday and also today. We're starting off today with the, island, the new island model for waste management here on the island of Tenerife. After some very serious work that took years rather than months, we drew the conclusion that we needed to take a quantum leap towards sustainability in an area such as we are, where I, an island, where although it's not easy to deal to waste management on the mainland, on an island is even more difficult. We need to be more ingenious because the land we have is limited. Here on the island of Tenerife, where furthermore 50% of the island is protected. So we face problems such as the critical mass that we need of waste to sort it's very difficult to hit that critical mass in order to make uh, recycling economically feasible. In the one of the infrastructure pieces that we're putting our money on, so that we can treat the waste as close as to source as possible here on the island. We can't start talking about the new waste management system without giving you a preview of the history of what went on 30 years ago. Yesterday we had the opportunity of listening to the previous president of the Island Council and who was the founder of the Island Plan for Solid Waste. They decided that they were going to control all the fly tipping, all the landfills all over the island, some of which were actually smoking, they were burning. And the leachate was uh, leaching into the soil, caused, uh, damaging the environment. So working together with all the municipalities on the island of Tenerife, they closed all these landfills, they restored the sites to their original state, and everything was concentrated in a single landfill in Arico in the south. At the time, this model was a national benchmark. People came from all over Spain to see how, we, how we'd made this change in, order, in concentrating waste management in a single control point. People would come from the mainland to see the transfer plants where we managed to optimize transport and we prevented small municipal dustbins had to come all the way down to a single point. So what we did was to put the rubbish through a transfer plant in order to optimize transport. What we were doing at the time was to try to reduce the environmental price of this by not just from an economic point of view, but from an environmental point of view. One major milestone to, find, to get to the situation where we are now was the, waste, the island waste plan. As European legislation made progress, and there's been an, an, a significant change in European legislation over the years, we also had to m move our management models here on the ground. So we developed a waste plan. Although the simplest thing would have been to set up a plan for a single m kind of waste, but instead of that, the plan encompassed all the waste that's generated on the island of Tenerife, um, both regionally and from a technical point of view, they laid down guidelines for managing waste on the island of Tenerife. This was a major milestone that we passed. 
we set up the infrastructure and all of the infrastructure was adapted and brought in line to meet the legislative requirements passed down from Brussels. So where are we now? At an international conference and talking about an island model, we cannot ignore the fact the island that we live in. We live on an island where there are about 900,000 people living on the island scattered over 31 municipal districts, 31 municipalities that can be divided into three major areas where people work. was the area around Santa Cruz and La Laguna, the Orotava Valley, and then Adeje Arona. On the island, obviously, there's a major impact that we feel from the tourism that comes here as far as waste management goes. Here in Tenerife, we talk about around 5 million tourists come to spend an average of a week on the island of Tenerife. So we're talking about 140, 150,000 tourists will be living with us at any one time, any day on the island. And this means that the population on the island is around uh, between a million and 1.1 million people generating waste, which has to be managed properly. Some models, in, for some models, the tourism will have a different impact from the impact it has on us. Our tourism is not seasonal. It remains fairly constant throughout the year. So when we're talking about sizing our infrastructures, it might appear to be simpler because we don't have these enormous seasonal peaks that you'll find elsewhere in Spain and in Mallorca, for instance. There might be these occasional peaks in waste generation that we need to be able to deal with properly. But this is not the case here. We don't face this seasonality. But what it does mean is that we're generating more waste throughout the year as we're talking about a population of just over a million people at any one time on the island of Tenerife, and we need to manage the, all the waste that they generate. We've said that this is a model that is in constant evolution. The model started with a slogan that we all know. We've seen this over the last 30 years on the sides of the, uh, the roads, Tenerife, the clean island. Although this slogan was necessary at the time, because we did have to clean up the 200 landfills that we've heard about so many times during this conference, Tenerife, the clean island, shouldn't sound quite so good as it did 30 years ago, because we no longer need to clean up the island so much. We have other needs now. We need to convert Tenerife into a sustainable island. Sustainable in the strictest sense of the word, i.e. sustainability is to exploit the uh, resource below uh, within its carrying capacity. Otherwise, we're not going to get anywhere. And one thing that we still have, to, we no longer have to clean the island up, as I say, but rather to make the island a, a benchmark for sustainability, not just within Spain, we need to be an international benchmark too. The model that we can build for managing waste on the island of Tenerife has to be a, a benchmark, as I say, that we can export to other places. Back in the 90s, we started to sort glass separately. And then around 2000, 2000, 2005, is when we started doing all the separate sorting as well. So it's not so long ago. It was not so long ago that we put these containers out on the curbside to collect the different waste fractions. They might be in better situations or worse locations of things. We know 
that we do not hit the percentage of waste that we should be sorting. So we, a major effort is required here, and this is everybody's responsibility, not just to the government. I'm talking about at a grassroots level, and I'm talking about a citizen. We need to be aware that if we, we know that the best waste is the waste that doesn't exist, so by minimizing waste, so everything, all the waste that we generate at home or at work should be waste rather than rubbish, waste that can be turned into raw materials for the recycling industry. And in order to do this, they have to be sorted at origin and put in the different bins rather than just thrown away. We're not throwing the rubbish away. What we're doing is depositing the waste that we are going to convert into resources. I've told you a little a bit about the Tenriff Island um, Waste Management Plan. The PTEOR was adopted in 2009 that started to introduce the European hierarchy of waste management. And as legislation and as waste management moves forward, and as the new European directives come out, we need to adapt not just from a planning point of view and the waste management policies, but also from the standpoint of infrastructure and their capacity not just from a quantitative point of view, but also from the possibility of receiving different fractions of the waste that come in different streams. There are seven strategical strands to this plan related to the hierarchy that I mentioned and which appeared, the concepts of minimization and recovering material for recycling as the main priorities in a waste management model, in a sustainable waste management model. The new model for Tenerife, more sustainable, that we want to roll out at the moment, in order to attain our target of a sustainable Tenerife, this is a model that's focused on the directives set by the European Union, where we want zero uh, landfill. It, we don't want to change the state of the, the waste to make it as inert as possible or to reduce its volume as much as possible so that it will co cover uh, as, le uh, the, as little space as possible. We've taken a major step, because what we're trying to do is to have zero waste. We can't be using our land with new environmental complex or to extend the landfill that we have down in Arico for the entire island of Tenerife. As we'll see now, we have new principles New infrastructure is necessary for managing this waste, and we also have an, an important new collaborative framework between all the different administrations responsible for managing waste properly. Local council, island council, the Canary Island government. We have to all work together in waste management. We have to set our lines of strategy, as we've done for developing this new management model, in which we can all put our needs at all levels so that all the cogs mesh so that we can manage our waste properly here on the island of Tenerife. The key points to this model are solidarity, where everybody from the government down to the grassroots level, we will all have the same rights and the same duties as far as waste management is concerned. We all have to be totally involved. This is an integral model. It doesn't just opt for treating the different waste streams probably, but it also takes an integral approach to waste, all the waste, all the waste that's generated on Tenerife. It's, there's a, we have to take this approach because this way we can harness the synergies between the different models for different waste streams and this way we can harness or make the most and cover the cost of the infrastructure. It's an efficient model and talking about efficiency we're not talking about the financial cost we're also talking about the environmental cost of the waste management model. Obviously, it's a, a sustainable model, 
as we've been talking throughout this presentation, it's absolutely essential to have a fully sustainable model for the island of Tenerife marked by the objectives that are set by the European objective. This is a model that will totally change everything, which depends on considering waste as a resource that is raw materials. So we can close the circles and we managed waste yesterday. Yesterday I heard, was listening to a very interesting lecture where we were talking about the circular economy. That is exactly what we want. We want to close the cycle in waste management here on the island of Tenerife. This is a model, as I've said, that's highly innovative. We want waste, zero waste taken to the, the cells of the landfill that we have in the environmental complex of Arico. One of the main strands in, of this new model is the infrastructure. We need new infrastructure to enhance service quality and to bring management to the grassroots and to the government. Another important strand is the environmental strand, which depends on reducing the consumption of these new raw materials, so we're minimizing the generation of waste. This comes from eco-design of all the products that we consume. First of all, we need to work on this before it becomes waste to prevent waste from being generated. What another stream is the administrative institutional stream. The starting point, of course, is at the consensus that we build between each and all, every one of the municipalities of Tenerife and with complete transparency so that by working together we can build the only feasible model for Tenerife. There is no other way that we can build a single model that is efficient, that will efficiently deal with our waste properly. And of course, we cannot forget the final strand, which is the socioeconomic strand. If we minimize expenses, the cost uh, and the environmental cost, but also we need to maximize the social benefit at the same time. We provide green jobs, we bring people into the, the employment market. We're generating, we currently generate about 2,500 jobs relating to waste management. We also generate high, highly qualified jobs because in the world of waste management is continually developing and we work with the universities, in this case the University of Laguna, in other case with other universities from the mainland, to be continually innovating and developing so we are on the cutting edge of technology in waste management in the broadest sense of the term. We have facilities, a series of facilities that you will all know about. We have a bunch of clean spots, transfer plants that we currently work with. The capacity here, we can manage around 625,000 tonnes. That's been our ceiling for the last 30 years. So, since 1985 to date, you can see how waste has grown. It peaked in 2007, 2000, between 2007 and 2009, and then, of course, the crisis has affected the generation of waste. People don't consume as much, so we have a faithful reflection in this fall in waste. And today, we're picking up the amount of waste that's been generating along with the economy. So as an economic indicator, we can see that the amount of waste that's generated coming into the environmental complex is increasing. So what we need to do is to prevent it growing any further, what we need to do is to stabilize it at the levels of 2007, 2009. And in order to do that, we need to minimize the waste that we generate right from the design of all the consumer goods. If we look at the green line, which is total sorting, we want this to increase. If we look at the red line, 
which are the sort, sorry, that's the total rubbish that's green, and the sorted one is in red. This is something that remains to be done because the sorting rates that we have are very low. We need to make the effort in awareness, education, to enhance our, the containers in order to transform the rubbish into waste and the waste into resource. And we need to reduce and get rid of the ordinary waste containers off the streets. We need to organize the waste that we generate so that they can be deposited, having been sorted, first of all, in order to hit the targets that are set by the plan to head to zero waste. As the first strand of the management model, we have a major improvement with regard to the delivery of the different waste streams. And all the facilities are within 10 minutes of anybody's home. We've, we've mapped all the roads on the island to ensure that facilities will be available. There's access to all our people in order to comply with the targets we've set. And this obviously reduces the journeys that they, the dustman's trucks have to run each day and therefore the amount of mileage they have to do. We've decentralized the collection points. So what we're doing really is treating the waste as close to the point of origin as possible. But above all, we've set up an integral network of both public and private structures for m managing our waste. And the main point, the landfill, is not the central point of all this, but it's just another node of this island network of waste management facilities that is made up of both pi public, public and private facilities. So let's move on to the logistics center and the transfer centers. The transfer centers were built just to collect all the, the, sing, the mixed rubbish and put it in large containers, compact it as much as possible. But we turn these into, into logistics centers where you can take, receive sorted rubbish to, and large volume rubbish can be treated and and waste will be distributed from here to managers on the island or further afield. So we don't have to transport all the waste from one point to another over the road. So we're optimizing both financially and environmentally waste management. We've increased the number of clean spots from five to 12. Some of these clean points are isolated throughout the island and others form part of these logistical centers. The new packaging plants with greater capacity in the metropolitan area, with, so according to our studies, the packaging plant requires greater capacity and we're in, so there's a need to build a new packaging plant, but it has to be in the ideal spot what we have to do is to pick up all this packaging so the metropolitan area is probably the, the best place for one of these transfer plants that we were going to con convert into logistics plants in the municipality of El Rosario. Also the composting plants, organic matter which accounts for some 40-45% of the waste that we're throwing away And this 40% of organic mortar is mixed with all the other ways. So what we have to do is to separate this in treatment plants. It's separated mechanically, automatically. We all, there is also some manual separation and sorting in order to create a biostabilizer. And the objective here is to pick up this organic matter at source to make compost in three compost plants, once in the north, one in the metropolitan area, and one in the south of the island to make this high quality compost. This is our packaging plant. This is our compost plant, the biostabilized compost plant that we have at our environmental complex. 
This is the bio waste that we uh, bring in from the bulk uh, recycling that we receive. And then we have our logistical centers. We have changed our transfer centers as well as creating new logistics centers. We have one in Takaronte on the north of the island. And this new logistics center serves the entire district before we had two transfer centers. So we saw that in the councils, we saw in the island council too, that we had to build this new logistics center so that we can prove this service and the quality of the service so that we could have it closer to source. We also have volume treatment plants so that the managers and the recyclers can also treat closer to source. And from an environmental point of view, we have also managed better. We have our clean points. We had five in the past, now we have 12 clean points. These are still free to all people of the island. We have, uh, we're open pretty much every day. And we therefore supply a service to citizens in which they can separate specifically all of their waste so we can correctly manage this waste. So we are creating a good infrastructure and good facilities so that citizens can separate and sort better. So this means that we are reducing the number of foreign objects in the recycling. So we are therefore facilitating for our citizens. We are giving them the right facilities whereby they can sort properly so that we can eventually eliminate all these foreign objects. Then we have the packaging plant in the metropolitan area in El Rosario. This will work alongside the packaging plant that we have at the environmental complex in the sort in the south. This should reduce transport costs, as I've already mentioned, and it should help us to uh, hit the targets that were set for us by the European Union. So this new model has boosted the number of public facilities on the island. We have three compost plants with their own um, waste management plans. And we are enthusiastically working on this area because we want to be able to recover this 40% of all waste. We want to restore the soils. So we have this 40% of waste and it's difficult for us to properly treat so that we can biostabilize it. And we therefore want to comply with the EU targets in terms of bio waste. So we therefore have these 2020 targets and we should be able to do this with the new plans that we have in place. Here we see some figures on waste treatment for the future. And we've spoken about this already a great deal. We know that by 2020, we need to uh, recycle and recover 50% of our waste, including all different streams, uh, all these different streams that we are at present uh, just simply throwing away. Mm, we're not brandishing a slogan, it's not a myth, it's not an ideal, it's a reality. So we therefore need conviction, we need belief, we need to believe that we're going to be able to reach these targets. We must hit the targets that have been set for us by 2020 by the EU. We need to hit this 50% target. We have no excuses not to do this. So we need this to hit this 50% target of the waste that everybody on the island of Tenerife generates on a daily basis. We've conducted far-ranging technical studies. I'm not going to go into great detail, but in these studies we've seen that we can recapture from these waste streams a, l a large proportion of what is being 
thrown away. So we need to look at what are we missing? How are we going to be able to recover these fractions? How are we going to be able to recover and reuse these fractions so that we can consequently reduce the environmental impact on the island of Tenerife? We have also certain figures about potential per year, 419,000 tonnes. That's the figure that we have potentially every year. This is what we are actually throwing away, what we are converting into waste. And the cost of managing all of this non-sorted waste is very high because we're only recovering a small proportion of the mixed waste that we're throwing away on a daily basis. So we need to be able to deal with this post-haste What's the solution to reach the 2020 targets? We need to increase this amount of recovery by 73,332 tonnes. Obviously, these are rough estimates because it's very difficult to calculate exact figures for a global waste management system. But these are figures that should help us to, um, with a slight uh, er uh, error rate, that should help us to calculate how we're going to act in the future. We also have forecasts for treatment. We need to adapt our facility to the new management models. We've spoken about creating uh, an infrastructure, public and private infrastructure network on the island of Tenerife. And we have forecast for our new facilities on the island of Tenerife that this will cost about 114 million euros. We're talking about current facilities including the environmental complex in the south and this is essentially a social cost because we want to improve the labour conditions of those that are working in waste management, we want to improve the infrastructures that are made available to them and many of the improvements are geared towards reducing the environmental impact that we're generating inevitably on a daily basis. There's more investment geared towards building new infrastructures that we're going to need so that we do not create more waste and that we can improve the quality of the service that we provide to administrations, businesses and citizens on the island. There's not an improvement in terms of volume treatment but adapting better to the needs that have been demanded of us by European directives. So I've been talking about this 40%, 40%. This is something we're going to have to do in the future. Administrations, waste managers, we're going to have to do something about this 40%. We're going to have to create the means whereby we can separate organic from the urban solid waste so that we can create compost. Now currently we have a bio stabilization process, it's a mechanical process and we there use this to create compost for crops uh, or for land leveling. So we have volume rubbish and because it's in, vo in vo volume this contaminates everything else and this mm, uh, corrupts the rest of the waste that we have. Therefore we are not making the maximum possible use of organic waste because it's corrupted by other waste. Now it's, an, in, in, it's a regional model that we have here. It's an independent model. We don't want to say that 
there's one model that fits all. It's and not just one single model for the island of Tenerife, because obviously on the island of Tenerife there are areas that are very diverse. There are more metropolitan cities, there are more rural areas, there are more urban areas on the city, the higher populations. But I think we need to bear in mind that the management plan on the island needs to take into consideration various different individual models. So we need to look at who generates waste and where. We need to look at different systems that we use. There's a whole variety of different waste collection plans. And by combining the various different characteristics of the various different areas, we can eventually roll out a plan, a plan that will allow us to combine the various different models so we can apply uh, a combined model to the island as a whole so we need individual and combined models for the island. Now we'll only be able to manage this 40% organic way so the only way we'll be able to do this is through consensus. We need consensus on the parts of the town councils and the island councils so that we can create an integrated management system, system that will allow us to meet everybody's needs and to have a smooth running system. We have three compost plants, I already mentioned this. We have one in the metropolitan area, one in the south, because it's very touristic, and in the north of the island. Second key priority or strand in our management plan is the environment strands. Now, throughout this presentation, I've repeated this slogan, zero waste, zero waste. We need to stop depositing waste in these cells. So we need to act before the waste is generated in the first place. We need to also sort properly so that we can recover waste. So, in environmental terms, we need a system in which we have carbon neutral management systems. We cannot release any more greenhouse gases because this is a key parameter. We need to commit to a model whereby we are developing a secondary rural materials market. And these raw materials can then be reused by industry. And we're also committed to the recycling industry by boosting this industry so that we can make maximum use of the resources that are available to us so we can process these resources to therefore create new raw materials for industry. This is how we will recover these recycled materials. So we go from rubbish to waste to resources and these resources become raw materials for industry. We also need to reduce environmental pressure, pressure and pressure on resources uh, by avoiding depos depositing rubbish in these cells we need to reduce this drastically, we need to reuse our resources and we need to drive down gas, greenhouse gas emissions. We need to also bring down our energy demands so that the system can be work much better. We need to pollute this island less. We need to better manage our systems in order to do this. We also need to reuse our resources. We need uh, minimal pressure on our natural resources. I spoke about 5 million tourists coming here. I spoke about 120,000 tourists living alongside us on a daily basis. This is not tourism that comes here for sun, sand and sangria. Mm. <laughs> These are tourists. They come here also to enjoy our natural setting and our environment 
So we need to make that waste management does not have any impact on this environment, on this natural settlement. We therefore need to commit to sustainability in the management of our waste resources, to improve environmental uh, management. We also need to reduce waste and landfills. We need to we cannot expand any more in the environmental complex that we have in Arica in the south. This, we have biogases, we have leachate being produced here, and we need to make use of all these additional waste streams so that we can create further energy. So we need to do this here. We also need to make better use of our resources. We need to uh, to diversify our economy you, by processing uh, waste, making it a resource we need to create a raw materials market for secondary materials and we also to invest more in R&D. We need eco-innovation, we need to create green jobs. Uh, carbon neutral management. We need to do this through various different management systems. First, we need to optimize logistics so we can drive down the energy cost. We need to, we need fewer uh, gas emissions by sealing waste in these cells, but we need to allow this waste to decompose within these sealed uh, cells so that we do not release gases into the atmosphere. We also need um, uh, to set off the energy by using renewable energy systems in the south. And uh, we need to better uh, manage our waste in the south. And finally, the third priority is relates to institutions. What are they going to do? We can only successfully roll out this model if we have the cooperation of the 31 councils and the island council we need to have technical consensus on this management model and this will be the best way to move forward we have to find intersector synergy mm, we've seen this in other countries in europe that mm, Industry has made use of waste as a resource. They have optim optimized logistics and transport systems. Mm, so we need to have a similar vision for this island when we think about how we're going to boost synergy between industry and all the other sectors. And of course, we need to have a network of public-private infrastructures on the island so that we can better manage. We public-private partnership is key. Of course, pay as you throw. This is a slogan that we bandied about all of yesterday. Basically, if you want it to cost less, then we need to reduce mass waste. And the only way can we do this is by sorting properly. If not, this system is going to be very pricey. We therefore need a good sorting system. There is no other approach possible. We need this principle of solidarity. Everybody needs to have access to the infrastructure and the management cost must be exactly the same depending, uh, regardless of where anybody lives on the islands. And then we have development instruments for management, and to optimize our management models, both in the towns, districts, and on the islands. We are working on models that only in combination will give us the island plan. We also need to look at the technical keys to our new model. Mm, we need to have technical consensus we need to manage our information through ICT tools. We need to computerize our waste management system. And this will allow us to uh, capture real-time information so that we can measure and see what is working best and where. 
so we need to have real-time data for our management model for the island of Tenerife. I spoke about investment earlier, and this investment includes in money for a real-time waste management monitoring system for the islands. And we also n need this information compiled somewhere. This therefore means that we need a waste observatory. This will be a central repository where we can bring together all these figures so that we can therefore have a safe and a secure way to manage our model and deal with any uh, fluctuations in the system. Next, institutional aspects. We need to have maximum transparency in our system uh, with regards to partner businesses and the users themselves. We also need this new waste management model to be a lever for a sustainable system. And we need a communication strategy, which is the Tenerife more sustainable. Uh, the, our slogan, the name of this conference, is, is, is no coincidence, because this is the key to introducing sustainability to our systems, particularly to the waste management systems on this island. And of course, we need um, outreach. We need to educate. We need to raise awareness particularly amongst the younger generations, so we need to have specific dedicated education programs for school children. And we also need uh, a pull factor for businesses to come and work on the islands, and we need to make this island environment, environmental for them to come here. We also have to make everybody responsible when they consume, everybody responsible for the environment when they consume. When people consume and create rubbish, they need to understand that our behavior has an impact on the environment, not only on the island, but on, for the region as a whole. We also need to um, create new habits for prevention and sorting. We need to have this environmental awareness and we need to spread it amongst our people. And we want I, Tenerife to become a hallmark for environmentally responsible tourism. So we need this for the island. Fourth strand, socioeconomic actions. Now, we spoke about this. Um, I know, I understand. I'm going to have to draw this to a close. So, socio-economic actions. We are going to have to create green jobs, uh, R&D jobs, qualified, highly skilled jobs, and we also need to work on the SEA system from uh, an environmentally viable point of view. So we need to basically make the entire system sustainable so that no area is going to um, have a detrimental effect on any other part of the system. Socioeconomic aspects. 1,500 people work on waste management. We have committed to uh, R&D, 2,500, two excuse me, and we have also committed to eco-innovation, eco-design as key tools for minimization uh, we also need cost control in our new system. This relates much to the management in, uh, information management system so that we control where we need to make improvements so that we can monitor costs and we can control our costs. We need to look at the cost of the waste as not only an economic cost, but an environmental cost, which is a cost that we can extrapolate from the system. And this is what we're looking at with this initiative, Tenerife More Sustainable. So what are the advantages for the island of Tenerife More Sustainable? Well, economically, socially, environmentally, we have all of these different principles. Environmental, because it reduces impact and pollution. Economic, because it makes the system more sustainable because we're controlling the global cost of waste management and social because it creates green jobs, 
uh, new uh, habits, new awareness creates good sustainable habits. So we're going to have an island with high cleanliness standards. Our slogan was Tenerife mm, cleaner and that's going to be Tenerife more sustainable. So we're going to improve quality of lives. And we're going to do this by processing our waste and creating new resources. And recycling can be an important plank in what the circular economy means to the island of Tenerife because it's going to allow us to also position ourselves in the resource recovery strategy for our islands. So that's what we will do and we're also going to improve hygiene conditions, hygienic conditions for the islands. So we have this idea of the circular economy and we need to move from generators of waste to a creators of secondary resources, raw materials. If we throw away less, if we have to extract less, then we will have better environmental efficiency. If we, at Tenerife, would need 28 times its, its land area to be able to supply raw materials to all of its citizens and also to throw away everything that we do. So the environmental footprint of this island is 28 times the land mass available to us. So basically, this gives us a clear indication of the direction we need to be heading in to make Tenerife more sustainable. To repeat our watchword once again, so the brand Tenerife More Sustainable, uh, our wholesale sustainable development, uh, cultural shift and awareness raising and consensus and so on and so forth, so that to, to make Tenerife more sustainable we need to have a horizontal strategy, bring in all the uh, management departments in the Island Council, a system that can be copied across various different sectors, tourism, agriculture, and our integral system needs to be based on a sustainable development strategy, that which has been developed by UNESCO for a social development change of paradigm. Tenerife Clean Island was our slogan in the past, 94. Now our new slogan is Tenerife More Sustainable. It's a new brand for a new society. It's a new model for a more advanced island. This is our commitment to the future because Tenerife needs to become a model of consensus in management, consensus between all the councils on the island so that we can make Tenerife a sustainable island in which we will want to live together and we want Tenerife to be an island with zero waste so that we can continue to live on these islands. Thank you. Together, thank you. Thank you.